Now this next one is called Mathiasin. The first time I had this actually, I'd read about it before. Um, I know John Bonet at the San Francisco Chronicle had written about this when he wrote about some of the fun whites coming out of California. Um, but I'd never had it before until I was in San Francisco uh, dining at a restaurant called Francis. And this was on the menu, and the blend was a lot like this, except instead of the Chard, it was Sauvignon Blanc. So you've got the two grapes from northeastern Italy, and you've got Sauvignon Blanc and Semillon. So it's just a fun, light, acid-heavy white blend. Right. Thought it would be good, and it just stopped me in my tracks. Really? I was with one of my close, close buddies. We ordered a bottle at the bar thinking, you know, it would last us through the night. 30-minute wait for our table, this bottle was gone. Yeah. And, <laughs> and that's a sign of a good wine. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I quickly looked into it. It's a little more available than the Massacan. You can find it at a lot of top restaurants across the country. I know Dina DeLuca sells it. I know it's not a large chain, but it is a chain, and it tends to be there. And you can also buy it on their website. I think okay. this one is 35 a bottle. Okay, and so um, it's four grapes. You said it's the Tocai Friulano, mm -hmm. and then the Ribola Giola, and yep. then Sap Blanc and Semillon. Yes. Cool. All right, let's see what this one is. This one is also around 12%. Okay. Right away, a lot, even though Sauve Blanc versus Chardonnay, this one is richer. This is richer. Right away. It's sweeter fruits, it's richer fruits. It's more um, the, yeah, a little bit riper on the nose, and I think some of that, um, I don't know what the percentage of Semillon is in there, but sometimes in Semillon I get a little of a, um, I don't say a waxy component, but something, you know, a little bit more of that like honeysuckle floral sure. and kind of like that richer character to it. And um, hmm, that's interesting. As soon as you said so honeysuckle, that's it's, it's floral. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Does this see um, any oak treatment, do you think? I'm not sure. Because it seems, yeah, it's got a, um, even though it's on the nose, it's got a, a rounder kind of. It almost, I mean, it, it smells like it was fermented in neutral oak or something along those lines. Something to give it a different nuance. It's not quite just the, the straight, clean stainless steel. Not that this isn't clean. It's very clean. Hmm. Definitely riper. A little heavier than the Massacan. But again, a white wine that you'd, you'd want to have with just all sorts of foods. Shellfish, sure. A hamburger, this would work. Right. You know, it's one of these white wines that you would want with a meal. I don't even, I'm not sure I know how to describe <laughs> the taste. I mean, it's a very, very unique taste, and I love it. It's, um, it's like, you know, you get those citrus elements to it. You get a little bit of a of like a peach, uh, the pit of it, a little bit of that kind of not necessarily bitter, but not really lush and, and juicy either. Um, a little bit of that grapefruit character coming through. That's a very different taste for a white wine that I have had in a long time. Huh. Yeah, the finish is very bright. You, get, you do get that richness, but that acid is still, I mean, that's, that's high acid. That yeah. It has great acid for that little bit more developed character to it. One of the other reasons about I know I, I know I mentioned the blind tasting and that these go against the stereotype of American wines. Yeah. But I you know, these are wines that fans of Chablis would like. Yeah. These are wines that fans of Sancerre would like. Right. They're just fun white wines and yeah, they're a lot like the top wines from North e from Italy. Um, you know, which don't get the appreciation that they really deserve. <laughs> Yeah, I, um, I mean, in a blind, you know, for some way studies or anything like that, in a blind setting, <laughs> there's no way that I would be able to pinpoint this because really the flavor profile is is very unique from what anything that I've had in probably the past six months. I mean, I'm like I said, I'm having a hard time describing it. I love that freshness to it, and never would I put this in California. And interestingly, the winemaker for this is um, a guy named Steve Mathiason. He does this project with his, with his wife Jill, and. They're in the wine industry, but he's actually a vineyard consultant. So uh, I'm not sure his exact history. I've never met him. But I know he spent, I think, the last couple of, you know, at least the last decade or more as a vineyard consultant to some of the top cab houses. Okay. Just working the fields, not making wine. I don't even know if people knew he could make wine. But this is the type of wine him and his wife love to drink. So this is the yeah. sort of stuff they started making.